Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the broadsword, which is definitely a fan favorite up there in terms of popularity with the longsword and silver knight straight swords. And for a little while I was actually pretty much refusing to use this weapon. I didn't really care for the fact that it had no thrusting attacks and couldn't work with the Leo Ring, and when I felt like using a straight sword, usually I was looking to use something with the Leo Ring. But after using this weapon for a little while, I realized I was being completely, just completely stupid because of that. This weapon does not need the Leo Ring by any stretch of the imagination, so not using a weapon because of its biggest pro is really stupid. And I was being really stupid. So I'll get into a little more detail on that and the biggest pro of this weapon a little bit later on. But until I get there, I've got a few other bits of information to go over. So, the broadsword is a straight sword class weapon. It has a weight of 3 units. It has a C scaling in strength and dexterity. And it requires 10 strength and dexterity in order to wield it. Now that those are out of the way, the biggest pro and the reason I would avoid using it is because of the move set. This weapon doesn't have any thrusting attacks. That's the biggest pro of the move set, though, and it didn't, it didn't really occur to me at the time that that was a pro. Now, the reason it's a pro is because thrusting attacks are slower than slashing attacks when it comes to straight swords in Dark Souls. Now, that makes sense. Because the thrusting attacks are slower and this weapon is all slashing attacks, its moveset is faster in general. Because its moveset is faster in general, it can combo a lot better and a lot more easily, and it's more user-friendly. Because of that, it's easier to mix up moves, because all of its slashing attacks just sort of blend together and work all well together, because it's nice and fluid and they're all slashing attacks. That's just sort of the nature of slashing attacks. So it's a big sort of mess of pros that all really make this weapon very, very good. So it's kind of hard to separate them. I'm just going to say that the biggest pro of the move, the biggest pro of the weapon is the move set, its speed, its comboing ability, because they all just stay together. They're all that one big glob of pros, for lack of a better term. Um, other pros of the weapon, though, I would have to say would be its ability to chase someone down. It's very good when you're chasing someone down. It's just a general straight sword pro, though. And honestly, it's probably the second best one for it next to the Balder side sword. The Balder side sword just because it's longer than the broadsword, but the reason why it's above the long sword is because with the broadsword, you can follow up your running attack with an R1, or with an R2 rather, sorry, and continue to chase them down in case they do keep getting away from you. And right there, jumping over that firebomb, that was pretty cool. It definitely made me feel good, and of course, being the friend that he is, he had to take that moment away from me as soon as we started the next fight. Of course, hitting me right off the bat with a firebomb kind of kills the mood, but whatever. Uh, Oh, also, shout out to Suicide Frog and a thank you to him for having these duels with me. Um, it was pretty much dead when I was trying to invade and get these clips recorded, and I mean, there was no one there in the township. It was really, really weird. But anyway, getting distracted. Uh, so I went over the pros of the weapon. Now, the cons of the weapon, on the other hand, they're a bit more you know, scattered, few and far between, so on and so forth with all that. Um, the biggest con of the weapon, though, I would definitely have to say is the short reach of the sword. It's a broadsword. It's not meant to be long. It's short. It's short by comparison to the other swords in its class. So because of that, it can be very difficult when you are trying to combo someone and you knock them just out of reach when you stagger them, or you're fighting against someone with a longer weapon, whether it's a halberd, a gargoyle's halberd, a spear, it makes it very difficult to sort of keep up with that. So that actually would be pretty much the only con of the weapon. I mean, if it was longer, that would be fantastic, and it would be very, very hard to deal with. It probably would be a bit more popular than the Uchi Katana, honestly. I can honestly see it being more popular than that if it was longer. But it's not, so thankfully, we don't have to deal with that. <laughs> uh, 
Alright then, so, there is actually another pro of the weapon I almost forgot to mention. And it actually just slipped away from me. What, what was it? You know, I probably should write these down. It's just occurring to me now, like, 50-something odd weapon showcases into it. But I probably should write them down sometime so they don't slip away. Um, I'll just throw it in the description because I am not remembering what that other pro was. I'm sure it'll come to me, probably come to me right before the end of the video or right at the end of the video, but oh well. Uh, anyway, there's one fight left after this. I'm just going to quickly recap everything. So the biggest pro is that one giant conglomerate mess of pros being the great moveset, great swing speed, all that. Biggest con is the shortness of the sword. Other pros, you got your typical long straight sword pros. Not long sword pros, that it's a straight sword. Um, yeah, I can't remember what that other pro was I was going to say. Oh well, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.